Yep. So I was hanging out in Cross to Crown stream today, right? And he got into a conversation that I think maybe we should all kind of kind of look at. We're not going to be able to listen to it or anything like that, but I can paraphrase it to this. And uh, because, you know, we are a Christian stream. Yeah. Sometimes we talk about Jesus. But this guy that he that he uh, duoed with, right? Because that, that's what he does is he does a random duo, and then he you know slowly builds a relationship, and then kind of gets to the whole Christian aspect of it, right? So he finally gets to the he finally gets to the Christian aspect of it, and this is where this is how we'll kind of play all this in, right? This guy says, "Yeah, I consider myself a Christian." Cool, and uh, and then he proceeds with everything that he says going forward to be the exact opposite of anything Christianity at all. Wow. So, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, he talks, in, he, he started off the conversation talking about how, how Tom Brady, uh, when he first won two Super Bowls, he said that, is this, is this it? Right? Like this didn't set, like winning two Super Bowls didn't satisfy him. So he used that as a jumping off point to saying, you know, what do we think satisfies us? Here, right? This is before he revealed that he is one and talked to him about anything of God. And the guy said, you know, a girl, like my girl said, like not satisfies you in a sexual way, but my, my yeah. but, but my girl satisfies me. And, you know, sometimes I get mad or whatever like that. And we're like, okay. And then that's when he jumped off into the whole Christianity thing. So, like, he had talked to them. This guy is, ha, has, like, the dirtiest mouth in the history of all mankind nice. as they're playing. So, like, you know, taking the Lord's name in vain the entire time, right? Not, not cross with the guy he's playing with. And then, like, he's like, and then when it's like, so, you know, what are your thoughts on, on the whole Christianity thing? He's like, well, I still, I, I consider myself a Christian. And then he's like, but I don't go to church. I don't see the need to go to church. I don't read the Bible. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the Bible's not authoritative based off of the history of people being evil. What's up, Puga, man? Uh, based off of the evilness that men have done because of the Bible. Right? So, like... Weird. And the whole reason why I bring that up is we live in a world, right? And and I put something on Facebook earlier to, to kind of that, that basically started this, right? Um, and the thought process is this is the kind of world that we live in when it comes to American Christianity is like they call themselves Christian. They have nothing to do with God. They have nothing to do with Scripture. They don't talk to God. They don't pray to God. They don't feel any sort of remorse for the sin. And here he is. He This guy legitimately thinks that he's going to heaven because he says he's a Christian, even though he denies every single attribute the scripture says that that it is. So he is deceived. Agreed. I agree with that. Right. And it's and, very, very sad. Right. And, and, and the conversation, the whole reason why I bring that up is like, like uh, this is the kind of world that we, that we live in as far as from a, from a, 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 a westernized christian world point of view i mean my son my oldest son kind of lives underneath that too where he thinks that you can not care about the things of the bible not talk to god not do anything and you're just going to kind of walk straight into heaven so yep we've got a we got to plan a trip to texas um so like like what are your thoughts on that like how do, how do you how does a person get to the point where they, they consider themselves Christian, but, like, the Bible does not have any authority at all. That's his own words. He's not the only person that we run into about it. it just happened to right. be in the stream while he was talking to this person. So, like, is it, do you do you blame the the sinner's prayer on something like that? Do you blame the, the quote-unquote, America as a Christian, like, country type deal? Like, somehow, because I'm in... America that automatically gets me a, a, a free ride into heaven. Like, where do you think the origin of that thought process comes from? A couple of things, actually. TV preachers, as a group, many of them have done great harm to the simple truth of the gospel. Um, and also, the men who are standing 
in the, the, the pulpit week in, week out. If you, if you pick out the warm, fuzzy stuff, the easy stuff, the blessed stuff out of this book, and you just teach on that, and you don't teach on sin and the responsibility and the requirement of repentance and of evidence of a changed life. None of us are going to be perfect. We're all going to stumble and struggle and fuss and fight and some of us still cuss and swear, not as much as I used to, but it still happens occasionally, uh, especially in traffic. <laughs> Sorry, it's just being true. Uh, if the truth of the simple gospel of Jesus Christ, crucified, resurrected, ascended to the Father, is taught with authority... Um, and responsibility for our part, um, I think those two things going together are a big reason why a man can say, I don't believe this, I don't believe that, I don't do this, but I'm going to go to heaven because I'm a Christian. Um, Matthew 7 21, 22, and 23. Uh, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father in heaven. That's, that's who gets to go to heaven. What is the will of the Father? To love God and love people as you love yourself. How do you love people? How do I love people? Um... I haven't put my hands on anyone in <laughs> anger I meant, in I'm, a long time. <laughs> a long, long time. I meant, like, how do you spiritually love people? By giving without, them the gospel. Without, without, the, without the presence of God in my heart, I can't. I don't have that love for the unlovable naturally. And I don't think anybody has it naturally. It is a supernatural gift a work of Holy Spirit in our lives that give us the heart like Father to reach out and to share the gospel, to minister to those who are hurting, who are less fortunate, who are in a place that, that's just really hard. That's how we do it. I mean, um, Matthew chapter 25 Jesus said, you saw me hungry, and you fed me naked, and you clothed me. Um, you ministered to me. You came and visited me in jail when I was sick because you've done this. And then they're, they're like, well, when did we do that to you? He said, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. And so that's how we minister the love that God's given us by loving others enough to see them as Jesus, see Jesus in them, right. and and inter, interact with them on that that uh, that plane of living. It's twangled up. So yeah, that's well. Um, I saw a question by Pugman that we're that I think it will be an awesome way to um, to extend this. But let's before we do that. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Kentucky Fried says that is that's some massive cognitive dissonance. Dissonance. Yeah. Uh, says Joel Osteen comes to mind. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is a nut job. I used to watch Charles Spurgeon on TV, but he died. Yep. Pugman says it's funny how you mention that because I feel that I'm deceived just by your explanation, and I am a fake Christian. Then, or do I have the mark of the beast or Antichrist spirit? And then he said, "Well, for one, Pugman, if you would." What do you mean by that? Why, how do you feel like you're deceived? Uh, can you please um, elaborate on that? And then the question that, I, that he asked right after that says, how do you love yourself? I have a great answer for that. 
Ephesians chapter 1. I don't, I don't feel this. I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make logical sense to me. But the word says, the authoritative word. The, the word of God. Ephesians chapter 1. What's up, zombie cat? Hel- welcome balls. back to the stream. <clears throat> because we are in Christ. If, if you are born again, God has, the Holy Spirit has brought you from a place of being a dead man destined for hell under the wrath of God to a born again position where you are God's child. You are in Christ. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. You stand before God, the creator, righteous because you're in Christ. This is what God says to me. This is what this is what changed my opinion of me in this little snippet of Scripture. It's Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to start in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, in every, with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. He has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory by his grace, by which he made us accepted and a beloved, and in him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sin according to his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and understanding. Uh, Verse 11, in him you also obtained an inheritance according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Um, 13, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of the inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. God said, because I'm in Christ, I am blessed, I am chosen, I am adopted, I am accepted, I am redeemed, and I am forgiven. And he said, you are holy and without blame before him because of Jesus and his completed work on Calvary. That's how I can love myself. That That's how, Pugman... Um, You, you've heard my story. I came from a place of addiction and alcoholism and perversion and lying and cheating and stealing and I just not a good guy. And today I, I have the ability to say I am a child of God today, a man of God uh, chosen to sit before you in this wild, weird, wacky way that God showed him and asked me to be part of this, uh, he said, do this. You're going to stand, you're going to sit before hundreds of people, and many people are going to hear your testimony, and they're going to be blessed because of it. And God is glorified because he saved my life and said, here, tell your story. And so that's Faithful. what we get to do here. Um, furry and fuzzy. I'm not anywhere close to perfect, but I am saved and I am forgiven and I am the, the righteousness of God in Christ. That's just the facts. Uh, it doesn't matter how I feel or what I think. That is the truth. And I'm going to agree with God. That's what Father said about me because I'm in Christ. And that's, that goes, it's not just Fred. That's for everybody that is in Christ. Born again, children of God. That is who we are. That's how we love this thing. That's how we love God, and that's how we love others. Because he's changed us. He's, he's made us. He's made us new. So there you go.